Les from Thailand here, retired and living the dream. Today's video is going to be about when expats go broke. I'm going to tell you two stories. Uh, again, all my stories that I tell are true because I actually know the people who've been involved in this. So the first story I'm going to tell about is about an English guy who in his late 50s decided to come and live here in Thailand. He always said he was well off and he had plenty of money around various parts of the world tied up in properties and one thing and another. And he described himself as asset rich but cash poor. So for me that was sort of a bit of a, um, an alarm bell when, when he was telling me all of this lot. But anyway, everybody to their own. And basically what, what was happening, he was a big drinker as well. And when he hadn't had a drink, he was one of the nicest people you could ever meet. But unfortunately, when he had too much to drink and he got into an argument with his girlfriend, he was an awful man. He really, really was. He treated her awful and just snarling and nasty and telling that Thailand is a, is a crap place to live and Thai people are stupid. And then in the morning when he'd sobered up, he was full of remorse and oh, I shouldn't have said that. But this was the type of guy that he was. Not my cup of tea, but because he knocked around with some of the other people that I knocked around with, we bumped into each other quite a lot. Anyway, his big idea was he was going to open up a shop in Ban Pei and he was going to sell roller blinds, curtains, one thing or another. Well, his girlfriend was, should I say. He was going to fund opening this shop. Anyway, he rented this shop and it was a, a new development that had gone on in Ban Pei. And he decided that he wanted to, to make it look better. So he put loads of lights in it and made it a very bright showroom. And he had all sorts of curtains and roller blinds and blinds in there. It looked, it looked fairly nice. He had mock-ups of beds to, to sell bedroom furniture, slippers, robes, everything. It, it looked pretty good. And his girlfriend was a seamstress, so she used to make the curtains and things like that. And she, she was quite good. And at first... Um, when he had a bit of money coming in, everything in the garden was rosy. And then the initial shine went off and he had the arrogance to think that people should come to him for blinds and curtains rather than him going to try and sell it to various people. I'll just give you an example. Um, there was a, quite a large resort, it was just about to open up and needed all blinds and curtains. and he was asked to give a quote for the whole of the resort, something like 50 odd condos. And uh, the arrogance was, no, you come to me, you come and tell me, you give me all the measurements and I'll give you a quote. I'm not gonna come over to there and measure. So consequently, the order was lost because of his arrogance. And because he was arrogant, um, he'd lost other people for customers and people didn't recommend him and things like that. And then he, he started running out of money because he'd spent what little money he had setting up this shop. And one day he sort of ran out of money and all he had left was one credit card. And so in the desperation of wanting to get money, him and his girlfriend went and he went to the gold shop and bought one bath of gold and put it on his credit card. He got a, like a thousand pounds worth of gold. Then he asked his girlfriend to go and sell it in the next gold shop. Well, one baht of gold is a thousand pounds worth of gold at the time this was. So trying to sell this 1,000 pounds worth of gold in the next gold shop, the next gold shop asked, why do you want to sell it? You know, and it was actually too much for the gold shops to be able to buy this amount of gold at one time and they were a little bit suspicious of, of um, this Thai lady coming in and trying to sell this gold. So long story short, they couldn't sell the gold to the gold shops. So he was very, very frustrated and angry and he told his girlfriend to go back to the gold shop where she bought it and ask him to buy it at a reduced rate. So he could just, so he could get some money. This is how desperate he was for money. Um, so the, the lady went back to the gold shop, explained the situation and the, the gold shop said, I'll buy the 
gold back off you. I'll give you the same price. I'll just knock it off the credit card and I'll refund the credit card, he said. So he said, I'm sorry that you're in this position, he said, but he said, I can help out by refunding the money onto your credit card. So she came out with a big smile on her face thinking she's done well because at least he's got his, all of his money back on the credit card and he hasn't lost anything through the transaction. Well, this guy went absolutely ballistic. He went mad with her, calling her all of the expletives in the world because she'd come out with there with no money. But she thought she'd done okay because she actually got the money back onto his credit card and she thought she'd done well. But he wanted the money in cash because he's got no cash left. So then he started asking friends to borrow money and foolishly there's a few people who lent him money and as soon as they lent him the money he was in the bar on the night. So that made a few people angry and then he got quite a big order for curtains and blinds and again he didn't give his girlfriend the money he just gave her a part of the money and he was spending the rest of the money in the bar and getting angry with the people said, listen, it's my business, it's my money, I'll do whatever I want to do with it. If I want to come and sit and get drunk, he said, then I'll come and sit and get drunk. And then he was just turning into this horrible person that he was because he was drunk. Then the following morning, full of remorse and oh, yeah, I shouldn't have said that, I'm sorry everybody. But then everybody was getting the, the measure of him and sort of disbanding him from various social groups and so he sort of got the message that he wasn't very well liked but instead of changing he actually was getting even worse and then come the day that he had absolutely no money whatsoever again he went round with a with his cap in hand and he was asking people for 5,000 baht he said, I just need 5,000 baht. He said, I've ordered some money from wherever he's ordered his money from. He said, I'll give you it back. I'll give you another 1,000 baht back next week. So he said, I'll, I'll give you 1,000 baht to borrow 5,000 baht for a week. And if, he got 15,000 baht altogether. And with what little money he had left, he bought a, a plane ticket and left Thailand. And he went back home to start a new life or a new beginning, leaving everybody that he owed money to in Thailand. So this is a short story really of a very sad story of this guy thinking he was gonna make everything over here in Thailand, but he didn't. But to give him his due, he did come back several years later and give the guys the money back that he'd borrowed. So, but he doesn't live in Thailand anymore now. He sort of learnt his lesson and he works back in England now. And so if you're gonna to retire to Thailand and you're only on a, a certain amount of money, very, very strong think about any businesses that you're gonna start on, think you're gonna make a lot of money. It is hard for Thai people to make money, let alone English people setting up a business with the girlfriends over here to make money. It's just not going to work. There are more businesses that fail here in Thailand because their girlfriend has a dream of running a, a business and one thing and another and it doesn't work out. It's very, very difficult. And the second story, again, th there, are, there are many ideas for people to start a business over here and they think they're going to make a lot of money over here. And invariably, it's the girlfriends that come up with the ideas and because those foreigners have a little bit of money in our pocket, we go along with that idea thinking, okay, it'll make her happy and we'll make a little bit of money out of this. And the second story is about a guy who bought a plot of land and was going to subdivide it into various plots and sell it off and make quite a lot of money. Or he thought he was going to make up quite a lot of money. Now this guy, again, only had a certain amount of money to live on before he could get his pension. So this money would have had to spin out for a few years until he got his state pension and he had to make this money last for six years now we're three years away from him being able to get his pension and he's just about running out of money now and um, another dream which went wrong he bought the land and his girlfriend knew the person who was, who was selling the land and his girlfriend was the person who knew the person who was selling the land so a little bit of a, a fishy tale going on there so she got commissioned because she 
got a person to buy the land and I believe that the land was overpriced in the first place. These two people aren't together anymore so that will give you an indication as to what actually went on. The land was overpriced and he's got eight plots of land and I think he's sold four up to now. So he's still got four pieces of land which has got his money tied up. So he's sort of getting on the bare bones of what he's got left for another few years. And is it going to make it for the next few years? He's made his life more complicated by trying to invest in, in land to resell, to make some money. Now again, some people will win and some people will lose. But for those people who think that their girlfriend is a great idea to be able to make some money, if you've only got a certain amount of money to last you a certain amount of years, best be safe and keep the money in the bank and live on a budget every single month because once you start investing your money, it ain't ever going to come back. Certainly not the way that you think it's going to come back. Some people have invested in bars, coffee shops, restaurants, laundrettes, many people that I know. And people, the only real people that I know that have made the money and making a living out of it is laundrettes, funnily enough, is that laundrettes do pretty well and there's not a really big investment to make for a laundress. But that, that's just going off the subject a little bit. But the main idea, do not use your money up that you've got to live on for a certain amount of years and you think this will do me for five or six years before I get my main income or pension or whatever it is, investments or whatever. Be safe. Don't use that money on a get rich quick scheme over here because your get rich quick scheme, 90% of it will fail. So I hope you found this video interesting. Leave a comment down below if you know people who've got their fingers burnt and been able to stay in Thailand or have to leave with their tails between their legs and go back home and start all over again. So watch my other videos. I've got many videos on here about buying houses, visas, etc, etc, etc. So from Les, retired and living the dream, till the next video, Bye for now.